Glory be to God. Clap some more. Let's celebrate the Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning, everybody. How are you today? Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate you. Happy Father's Day to all the men also. We love and celebrate your sacrifices, your sense of commitment, and all that you do to make it worthwhile in this world. It's my prayer that we'll have more responsible men to make our world better in Jesus' name. Yesterday I was speaking to men at Household of David Church and I said that every time you do a thing as a man, you communicate to a generation without knowing. So for example, when you do what is right, beyond that thing that is right, that you just think you did what is right, you have communicated to anybody around you that this is what a man should look like or what a man should do. If you do what is wrong, you have just communicated to yourself, to somebody around you, what a man should look like. So there are certain things I can do today that can inform how my children think just by looking. And so the man is a very, very powerful force. It's a seed of God on the earth. And it's a powerful force and the greatest influence that you can find. And that's why all our actions and our acts and our deeds just have to be guided by God. I just pray that God would keep helping us every day in Jesus' name. Yeah. Men go through a lot. Um, sometimes you think women go through identity crisis. By research, I think men go through identity crisis more than men, more than women, interestingly. When God was going to meet with Jacob, the first thing he asked him is, what is your name? It was an identity problem that God says, I can only solve your problem from an identity perspective. Psalm 8 verse 1, angels asked God, what is man? Jesus looked at, uh, the devil looked at Jesus one day and said, if you are a man, if you are a son of God, turn this stone to bread. You know how you want men to do miracles? Pay the house rent. Pay for food. Pay for, so turn stone to bread. So many times the pressures are there. And um, the one that can kill you is when your girlfriend or your wife asks you, are you a man? That one is now worse. So we celebrate all the men. God will keep helping us. Once again, let's celebrate them. Glory be to God. So this morning, we'll continue where we stopped last week. We started a series on the missing link, the missing curriculum in our spiritual work. And, and that's what we want to look at today. What is missing in our spiritual work with God? So we call it a slingshot so that when we take certain actions we should be able to have predictable results around those actions. So I'll start from Obadiah 121. So we'll take it from there, Obadiah 121. Thank you, Jesus. Obadiah 121 says, And saviors shall arise out of Zion. They shall arise out of Zion. Then they will go up on Mount Zion to govern the mountains of Esau. Then the kingdom of the Lord shall now become ours. Savior shall arise out of Zion. Zion there can be, can be um, explained as the church. The symbol of the church. That saviors will come out of the church. So there's a prophetic signal by God and from God that there's a plan in the end time that saviors shall arise 
And when they shall arise, they will not come from the world system alone. God says that I have a group of people that shall arise from, from the church. So he called them Savior. So it means that every child of God in this end time is ordained to be a Savior. Is ordained to be a what? Savior. So God is looking for us to becoming not just human beings and not just becoming believers. He wants us to be saviors. So every field you find yourself is savior. That, that's the agenda. That's the plan. Every sphere of influence is savior. You're in banking. He sees you as a savior. You are in um, FMGC. God says beyond that, I've ordained you as a savior. And I'm sending you to go and join, to go and judge the mountain of Esau. Because the mountain of Esau is the mountain of pride. There's a pride that is in the world that makes men believe that we don't need God to rise. We don't need God to be great. You find that in Isaiah chapter 6 where it says in the last days the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted above all mountains and all nations shall flow into it and they shall say come teach us the way. So you see that so nations will come and they'll begin to ask one man come teach us the way that it is done. So you see that a time will come and it's not far and it's a prophetic signal to the body that the church is going to become and we are becoming the envy of the world. Somebody say amen to that. That's your prophetic destiny. That's your reality. You are saviors. I saw this scripture first time in my life in 2005. First time in my life. I probably have read the Bible that time, but they say when you read the Bible and just jump, some things don't even communicate. It came really, really alive in me when I saw that he says that we are saviors. So I began to carry myself as a savior. A savior, a problem solver, a solution to the world. I won't just be like a mere man. I won't just go to work like a mere man. I won't just go to the office like a mere man. I'm a savior. To the point I told myself, if I ever sit for an interview and they don't take me, they just missed a savior. Because you brought out a vacancy. I said, accountant is needed here. It's because you, are, you have a problem and you are looking for somebody to solve it. You need an accountant. If you could do it yourself, you wouldn't need an accountant. But now you came out and you said, we have a problem. We are looking for a CFO or we are looking for a chief accountant or whatever the case may be. That means the company has a problem. Who are they looking for? Solution providers. They are looking for saviors. So every time people feel rejected and they said, oh, get back to you, I never go back to them. I said, they, they missed the Savior. Because you have a value to offer. Someone said, have a value to offer. Except you are not sure of yourself. God says that saviors shall come out of the church. Shall come out of the church. So we're not just coming to play pranks every day and say we're just gathering. Our destiny is just not to clap our hands, be an usher and go home. He said, saviors, saviors are coming out. And in the name of Jesus Christ, I declare that God is enlisting us even into that army in Jesus' name. Say that amen like you believe it. Scream it like you believe it. If saviors will come out of Zion, these saviors must be trained. So let's look at the training of the Savior. That's where the discipleship comes in. The training of the Savior. Because not all believers will end up becoming saviors. Just like saying, not all boys will end up becoming fathers. They can have a child outside. They can impregnate a woman. You know, when you say fatherhood, you're talking about the presence. You're talking about a lot of things. So not every woman can become a real mother. So not all believers will actually become saviors. So there are believers that will just be waiting for Jesus to come and they want to go to heaven. And that's all they will do all their lives. They don't have a savior plan or a mandate. And that's why I beg you, whether you're a student, a director, a manager, any level you're operating with, you must have that mindset. I'm a savior. God sent me to be a savior. 
I'm a savior for this company. I'm a savior for this company. I'm a savior for that company. Somebody sent me a review of one, one, of, one, one, of our, one of us here, one of our friends here, who went to work somewhere and they said that, look at the review. Look at what was said. He said that this person is a great addition. Savior. Tested with money, integrity. Tested with this, pa. Tested with this, pa. And they said, he said, Pastor, you have done a great job on this kind of person. And I said, no, the person trained herself. Or trained himself, whoever the person is. So, there's a training. And this training is different from the curriculum of the world. So if you get into an organization, they, if you're a graduate, they take you through graduate training. Or management training. Why do they have management training? Very simple, because they are seeing you as management in the future. That they are hoping you become a management staff. So now they're giving you what they call a management training or they give you like a graduate training. Why? Because they want to equip you for the job. They don't want to give you a job you are not equipped for. So for graduate training, you may have studied other things. Now they are saying you are coming to this sector. Let's train you for three months. Let's train you for six months so that you can fit in. A culture fit. So you won't be a problem in the organization. So they said, let's put you together. Glory to God. I said, glory to God. Savior shall arise. It's not just enough to pray it. That Lord made me a savior. Very powerful. But there's a training that every savior must receive. Saviors just don't emerge. They just don't emerge. Somebody say, Lord, train me. Now, let me show you um, the training of saviors and the only example I will use is the perfect example, Jesus who was just a mere boy now forget about the prophecy on his head forget about the, the supernatural about how he was given birth to he came on earth and the Bible says that he he was operating as a normal man, are we together? now so, see what the Bible says and when he was 12 years old, so he began, this story began from the age 12. So we didn't talk about his 0 to 12 because there's nobody here that is less than 12. Everybody here would likely be above 20. So we would have even taken it from 20 to, let's say, 35. But let's take it from 12 so that you can see how that thing happened. So at the age of 12 years, they went up to Jerusalem after the custom of the feast. Can we do NIV and a long read? Verse 43. After the feast was over, while his parents were returning home. Now look at this. When they got to camp meeting, you know, I don't know if you went to such camps. Many of us go to camp or go for campings, not because we want to learn anything, but because camping is a place to socialize. When we're young, we follow our parents to camp. Once we get to camp, they leave us with other children. They go and do their crusade and they are talking to Jesus and they, for they forget us. But we are fine. We are playing. Many times in camp, we sleep on the mat. We sleep on the floor. Yet, we are not suffering. We are having fun. How many of you have been to camps like that before? Oh, beautiful. Wow, great. When I, every time I go to a camp like IKG, Arakeji, we are always great. No, the toilets are messed up. But it, it doesn't mean we just came to have fun. Whether they are praying, whether we, we, we don't know what is happening there, that is the parents that are receiving Jesus, we are playing. So Jesus followed his parents to camp. And they got to camp and um, they forgot about him for three days, which was just normal. Then when the feast was over and his parents were returning home, the boy Jesus stayed behind in Jerusalem. And they were unaware of it. You know why? Because everybody will move together. And so by the time you get to your bus stop, you'll not be looking for your children. So they don't get missing. So they had moved. Jesus stayed behind. How old was he? Talk to me. How old was he? Twelve. You know, this is the kind of thing you do. You receive the beating of your life from your mother. And they're not going to wait. If you have a mother like mine, they won't wait till you get home. You start receiving your beating and the beating will last till you get home. Next verse. Verse 44. Thinking he was in their company, 
they traveled on for a day. Like I said, it was just normal. Everybody moved together. So they felt Jesus was just with his guys. He was playing with all his 12-year-old guys. So those young boys, those young girls, they were just together. So they felt Jesus was doing the same thing his, his, his mates were doing. Then they began looking for him among their relatives and their friends. So where are you going to find a 12-year-old boy? You go check his friends. You check his age range and ask, where is Jesus? I said, we've not seen him. Oh, we saw him yesterday. Oh, have you seen Jesus? So, no, we didn't see him today. Have you seen Jesus today? Oh, we, we saw him a few hours ago. I can't see him again. So, not, the friends can't find him. So, let's ask the relative. So, when they went to meet the relative and said, oh, um, the uncle of Jesus. Have you seen Jesus? He said, no. They went to meet James, who is the brother of Jesus. Have you seen Jesus? I saw him a few hours ago. Suddenly, nobody could see Jesus. They wanted to see him where his friends are and where his relatives are. And he was 12 years old. Listen to this. Listen. And this is one of the laws that you must first understand. Never be found where your age mates are. Write it down. Don't be found where your age mates are. You want to rise. You want to go further. Don't go where they are. Don't go where they are. Because if you stay where they are, you think like them, you walk like them, and you end up like them. The mission curriculum. Last week we talked about being familiar, leaving the familiar. A time would come, you have to do that. How old was Jesus when he was? Who taught Jesus this? At the age of 12. Oh, I believe in yourself. My friendship, me, friendship, me. And all those things. We've been friends for 40 years. We've been friends, and it is beautiful. I mean, so you can be... So it means that if you are going to stay with somebody, make sure the person is inspiring. Not all of you, you uh, getting two over ten together in the same class. You now became a gang. Two over ten. What a gang. How, what is your future? All of you in that gang. You can tell. You can't find somebody who has 9 over 10 in the midst of people who have 2 over 10. The person cannot be comfortable by natural instinct. You can't find her there. You can't find him there. But, you know, you are 2 over 10. Guy, what you get? 2 over 10. Say, ah, guy, guy, we are good, we are good. We are good. In the midst of failure? No. No. At best, spend lesser time with them. I don't say break relationship with them. Spend lesser time with them. Look for friends in your close range that can inspire you. It's one of the decisions I made very early that I would always be around people that inspire me. I don't want to be around people that tell me I'm doing well. I spend less time with people who try to romance my ego. I spend more time with people who make me feel that I've not started. And he helps me. Not that you see that and say, we have arrived. We are now there. No. Jesus was 12 years old thinking like this. Ask your neighbor, how old are you? Jesus was a, he has not even resumed as a carpenter. He was son of man. I'm just trying to tell you how you look at the scriptures. You look at your life. You know that it's not measuring up, even in times of normal conditioning. 12. They were looking for him amongst his relatives. Looking for him amongst his friends. Go to verse 45. See where they found Jesus. When they did not find him, they went back to Jerusalem to look for him. So they took another one day trip to go and look for him. Verse 46. After three days, it took them three days to look for Jesus. After three days, they found him in the court, the temple court. He was sitting amongst who? Read it out. Read it out very well. Amongst who? Listening to them and what? They found him amongst teachers. Twelve. No, stay with verse 46. Stay with verse 46. They found him amongst teachers. The King James said that Okay, I like this. Stay with NIV. There are three statements made here. Write this down. If you are going to walk in the steps of Jesus, number one, three things are very important. Where you are sitting, number two, who you are listening to, 
And number three, the questions that you are asking. Where are your notes? And get your notes. You are workers. Who is your leader in this thing? You are the leader of this group. Your people don't write. Please don't do this again. Be a responsible leader. You are not like that, so teach them to do the right thing. You are workers. I won't talk to anybody, anybody like that. If you are wise, you get a writing pen so that you can always put on your phone. You can always go back to learn. Don't just come to the church to just want to hear something nice and go. Let it substantiate your Christian faith. You should be able to defend your faith even when you are alone. And you can always remember that I learned this, I learned that. Even when it is a child, that is not making sense. I sit down here when somebody is preaching and I write. One day I was teaching Bishop Oedipo was writing. I can't believe he can, he's writing. I told him in the office that you can't be writing what I'm saying. You must be receiving inspiration from heaven. But it's just a leadership thing that when somebody is talking to you, you write. If at that level he can be writing when I'm talking and I tell you he's not writing what I'm saying because there's nothing I'm saying that can inspire him. There's nothing I can say that can inspire him. We are not in the same class. We can never be in the same class. Amen. Amen. Are we together? So let's get back to the teaching. Where he was sitting, age 12. Number two, who he was listening to. Number three, the questions he was asking. I think that these three fundamental principles have a way of changing people's lives. So even if you are 30 now, if you are 40 now, if you come back to these principles, it will help you. Because you are going to see the gap when Jesus looked at, when he became 30, 30 and when he became 33, I will show you. You will now see how he was not the same thing with his mates. How he was not the same thing with his age class. Why? At 12, what he was feeding on was massive. I, I did not even meet, I don't match and I don't meet this kind of um, profile. I don't. At age 12. I don't know where you were, but try and remember. At age 12. Age 12. What I know I will be doing is that I'll be doing sway. Or cutting grass for, in the school for the teacher. That's what, what I can remember in age 12. Maybe I'm doing sway. Do you know sway? Aha. Uh -huh. So you're doing sway or you're doing skipping rope. At age 12. What are you doing at age 12? Did you? You're in Kaduna. Uh -huh. we're, in, we're in Kaduna together. Although we never saw. <laughs> what were you doing at age 12? Who can remember? Age 12. You're doing skipping rope. Uh -huh. Some of you are in Kaswa Market. If you're like me. I mean, you're in drama group, Abby. Drama group. So, would you, were you sitting down with teachers at age 12? You see, and that's why Africa, we need to be we need to be angry at ourselves. Instead, we are happy people. Go and meet a Japanese at 12. Meet a Chinese at 12. You'll be inspired. You would think you have wasted your life. Sonny. Sonny is a family's name. They started it at the back. By the time you are 12, you already know how to couple a TV. A Japanese can write about four programming languages at 12. At 12, they are sending us to go and grind pepper in Africa. They call you 12 times in one hour. Go and do this, go and do that, go in one hour. 12 times. Jesus was sitting down. I mean, he was, he came from a family. That there was no one, don't say that. They were elites. Or they were very rich. These guys were probably, I think, less than average. I think less than average. Who taught him this? You see, and one thing I've learned is this. Sometimes, you know, if you are not taught, you go and look for knowledge. Don't say, my parents never taught me this. My father never taught me this. My mother never taught me this. Go look for knowledge. My, when I was a tutorial school teacher at Concept Tutors, I used all the salaries, apart from my first salary that I sold at Winning West Africa, I used all my salaries to buy books. And then, I was just in my 20s. So I was not even 12. So I, can, I mean, it's hard to even match up. He 
He was sitting down with the teachers. Now, where you are sitting today matters. Who are you sitting with? Who are you aspiring to sit with? Your real problem is with the people you are sitting with. Because the people you sit with, you are very comfortable with them. Everybody's poor. Everybody's broke. I hope you know broke can't help broke. Broke can be friends with broke, but broke can't help broke. One of my friends asked me a powerful question. He said, how can I, how, he asked me, what, what can I do to, he said, I have this billionaire, I want to go and see, you know, and I've known this billionaire for 20 years, they've not done anything for me. I said, they can't do anything for you. He said, how do you think I can, I said, go and tell the man to, I think we're talking about it together, tell him to adopt you as a son. Because if you are not in that clan, there are some things you will never get. It's called power dynamics. Have you wondered that why nobody in your lineage has become minister in this country before? Have you ever thought of that? And why is possible nobody will ever become a minister or a governor or a president? Check it from way back now in the future. Is there's every like the best is appointment. If you are not part of a family, sorry, is employment. If you are not part of a family, you receive employment. If you are part of a family, you receive appointment. So you can be, so you say, oh Lord, raise me, raise me. It's power dynamics. We must start from here. Where are you sitting? Twelve. Not at 8.35, they are telling you stop, stop doing WhatsApp in church. It's a shame. Or at, at, at 30, they are telling you, asking, your boss asking, why are you just coming to the office by this time? At 40. Ah, No. He was sitting with knowledgeable people. Number two, you see, and that's why the first law of discipleship is sit down. Humble your pride. Sit down. I know so much. Sit down and, and learn. It's different from a corporate sector. It's very different. You sit down. Then, after sitting, he was not listening. Now, there are people who don't listen. They are, see, the reason why they are quiet is because they want you to finish what you are saying so that they can talk. And listening is a skill. Listening is a skill. That when you truly listen, I'm not talking about hearing now. When you truly listen, you can hear what the person is not saying. So it means that as, as, as I'm talking to you now, do you know it's possible you'll be writing something that I did not say with my mouth? And that's what you are receiving. And that's, that's the proof that you listened. That's why you, can, you can't... When somebody said that, ah, your, your sermon changed my life. I said, change your life? I said, prove it. I said, I was inspired. No, you only heard. What you do after you leave today will now show whether your life has changed. How can you listen to a sermon and say your life has changed? You're just trying to boost the ego of the person. So you changed my life in that sermon. How? No. When you go back, you walk it out, you don't say, okay, this is what happened, then this is how my life was changed. See, I like that we should be able to measure and, and quantify things. You know, that we don't want to be scientific with the gospel, but we must be real with ourselves. He was sitting down with knowledgeable people. Number two, he was listening. Sometimes learn to listen. Don't try to, I mean, a guy came to see me, and of course, I have a 30 minutes cap, max 45 minutes. And that's why I limited counseling to, to email. I'll answer at my time, respond at my pace, you know, and reduce drama. Somebody came to see me for 45, I said, you have 45 minutes. And the guy spoke to me for 40 minutes. When he was done, he said, what do I think? I don't think anything. You have three more minutes to go, guy. I said, when can I see you again? I said, I'll give you the next date. No. I listen. When I sit down with my mentor, I don't go and tell them, sir, yesterday I sat down with an ambassador. Who, who cares? Who is an ambassador? Oh, boy, bring out your note and learn. You can't. You see, we need to stop the spirit of pride in our generation. You want people to know how you are doing, what's the next thing you are doing, how, how, how you are, how, so that they can say you two, you are making it. That spirit of you two, you are doing it. It's not necessary. If it is truly success, it will announce itself. 
I got to a country, somebody said to me, you didn't tell us we were coming. I said, it means I'm not, I'm not successful yet. Because the guy said, oh, if I knew you were coming, you'd have preached for me. So please, when I come in next time, tell her. I said, I don't do it. He said, what? I said, if I have to tell you that I'm coming, that means I'm not successful yet. I would rather grow. That, you see, you will know that I'm coming. Amen? Amen. Every time when Albonke is coming to this country, we know. He doesn't come to my house to knock. Guy, I'm coming. He will know. I said, guy, I'm coming. I'll come here. So where have you preached? Let me find three churches. I said, no. Your level is your level. So you sit down. You listen. Then number three, he was asking questions at the age of 12. I mean, and I'm thinking at 12, what's a 12-year-old guy asking? And they considered him intelligent. Now, in multiple intelligence theory, the, que- the kind of questions you ask determine the kind of answers that you get. So, for example, there are five levels of questioning. In Nigeria and our educational system, we have been trained with the first level of questioning. So, for example, somebody who sits down to write WAEC is different from somebody who sits down to write IGCSE or International Baccalaureate. There are three different things. You know why? Because in WAEC, let me give you an example in biology. It's a, let me start with mathematics. In WAEC, you are given some very high stuff to answer a theory that even the person who said the question may never be able to answer all the questions correctly. And number two, they expect you to remember all the formula. So it, you were trained to cram. That's why at be, when you finish an exam and you get C, if you write that exam, as a Nigerian, you likely get F after one hour. You may not remember after one hour because the moment you pour what is in your head, is gone. La cram, la pour. And it happened to all of us. We write an exam yesterday. If you come and write it tomorrow, we will have to read, go and read again. Because we were, we were not understanding. We were just reading. I was once a medical student. When you are reading for an exam, the way, there's a way you have arranged the compartment of your brain. You don't talk to anybody when you are going for an exam. Good morning. But you feel like once you start talking, your brain starts leaking. We didn't understand. When you read the mitochondron is the powerhouse of the cell. When you break down the mitochondron, you would have adru- ad- adenosine triphosphate plus H2O. It will now give you ATP plus CO3 plus energy. And you now arrange all those rubbish and your head is just chemical equation. What use is that chemical equation? One day they were teaching us the chemical equation for cocaine and it was very long. And if you did chemistry, you remember it. It was very long. I said, oh, what use is this knowledge? C6, H12, O12, o, 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 o plus, you know, and of what use was it? The way we were questions, we were cramped. We are not prepared for the future. In IGCSE, they'll give you the formula for the same mass question. In the first page, you see all the formulas needed to solve the 12th question. Now, the real problem is, you see, now you have seen, form, you have seen formula, you have seen question. Now, people still fail that exam. You know why? Because that you have formula, and you can see, sometimes you can read a question and not even understand what that, for you to even know the formula will be, you must be a genius. In biology, they want to ask you, what is cell? Of course, if you have read essential biology, key point, the same definition, every one of us received the same definition across the country. Cell is a what? Basic unit of life. And we're not taught by the same teacher. And we receive the same definition. You see her problem. Then you sit down for an international exam. They will say, with the aid of a well-labeled diagram. You see, they're trying to ask what is cello. With the aid of a well-labeled diagram, kindly analyze the difference between the kinds of cells that we have. I don't think that was a simple question. That was not a simple question. That's six questions in one. You first determine, define what is cell. Then you now mention the kinds of cell. Then you now draw the two cells. I know that's not easy. To first draw plant cell, to now draw animal cell. Then you now compare. You first talk about the functions of all the things inside each cell. Then you now come back to now talk about the differentiation. In the midst of that, you talk about cell theory. Six questions in one. 
Anybody who grows like that grows to become a great thinker. You see the difference? He, so and that's why, let me beg you, say, uh, public school, I don't know whether it's in private school, public school, there are children that are making it. Please, you, you need to be sensible. Don't because of poverty say, better send your children to good schools. If you didn't go to good school, send your children to good schools at your level. You're not just paying for teaching, you're paying, paying for a teacher that has emotional intelligence. He was asking questions at the age of 12. Are we getting blessed? Now, let's, let's continue about Jesus. Now, after the age of 12, he went to learn carpentry. So, it's not that they employed him in Shell. They didn't employ him in Chevron. They didn't employ him in Exxon Mobil. He went to become a carpenter. So, he had a boss. Listen to this. He had a boss. And they were teaching him this how to use plywood. This is how to cut plywood. This is how to use plier. This is how to, you know... And that's why I believe what the Cosmos Publica says. He said the secret of entrepreneurship, or the, he said the best way to multiply entrepreneurship in Nigeria is to go with the principle of apprenticeship. It sounds like a cultural intelligence, but it's like what we explain in other ways, but it's still apprenticeship. That you can teach somebody how to do it. Every time I see my mechanic, I'll say, where's this person working with you? He's gone. I said, do they leave you every four months? Is that how your attitude is bad? Every time I come, nobody is there again. Nobody is there. He said, sir, the truth is that nobody wants to learn again. He said, when they see their friends doing Yahoo and they are, they are making it big, they don't stay. And you know, there's a rush in this generation. Two-minute success. You, know, you want to do what can give you a fast money. Jesus that you follow did not do that. He was a carpenter. Not once was it reported in the scripture that he, he constructed a stool for somebody and the stool was like this. So, which Jesus are you serving? You have to expand and you have to cut and cut and cut. Jesus has skill. That's even if you deliver. You give you a cloth for Christmas, you give them after New Year. Jesus was a carpenter. Jesus. And he became a carpenter after the age of 12 because this was when they made him a cop because of this attitude that you are doing like you know too much. Then go and look for a job. At least you can go to school. Then he became a carpenter. Not once was it recorded that Jesus did furniture for somebody in the house and came to complain. You know, if they came to complain, they would never receive him as a savior. Then you not say, I'm not the savior. Then you that you got those two. No, I, I, I guess what I'm saying. They will look at you. So I wonder, somebody says you, you want to, you want, I, I'm called to be a man, I'm called to be a man of God, a pastor. You, to, you can't even, they say you manage a unit, you are still struggling. Which curriculum will you use to pastor? So you have people who have, who have dropped out from the real diet of what they are supposed to have learned, now they're producing a group of people like them. They see that Christianity is losing, the curriculum is different they always say that when four doctors who train from different places, if they meet at the theater room for the first time, the moment they start talking and they want to operate on somebody's body, they know what to do. If four pastors sit down here, you find the knowledge gap is very different. It's God. He was a carpenter. Let me show you a scripture. Glory to God. You see, your working full time is not the reason why you can't succeed in discipleship in the church. Jesus was not just a nine to five guy. He was a full time apprentice. I mean, because people will say that, oh, so you don't know the kind of work that we do. That's I say, say, Pastor, 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 um, you don't work. You're just a bloody pastor. Because if you know what we do in the office, if you know what we do in the office, you can't be, you can't be demanding this kind, this kind of time from us. What do you do in the office? I mean, and I know people really think that pastors are, 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 they are they're scrapheads. I, I'm sure. I mean, I employed somebody one day and we had to, we had, we had to fire the person after two days because the person thought we were joking because the idea is that they don't work in church office. I've employed somebody before. I said, why did you come in? He said, there's no water in our area. 
said, there's no water. I said, what happened? He said, we're fetching water till 11. My God. An assistant head of a unit. Who did this to us? Should you ever say that out? If you are looking for, you should have, they should have taught you what to even say. That there's no water. One came one day, said, I overslept. I said, oh. I said, you must be tired. Say yes. I said, go, go back and sleep. And come back when you're better. Like in the afternoon. And the person went to sleep. It, you see, the kind of Christians that are growing. And that's why, you see, they can be a CEO in this church. And they are watching you. They can't employ you. They can't employ you. And guess what? The person went back to sleep. And the person is still sleeping till date. Oh, yes. I can tell you. The person is sleeping. To the person, I'm a wicked person. But I wanted to transform your life. There's a, there's a kind of discipline you receive that will transform you. You will get it straight. That wow. You resume that work. So imagine that kind of person is appointed as a special advisor to a government. That's why you see this guy that was, who was saying this, this song, Oh, go, go, follow me. And you're excited. That's why you're an ole. You stay as an ole. That's why you're an ole. Why do we celebrate mediocrity? So if, if he gave or go to your ole, is your ole not supposed to upgrade? Oh, you are ole yesterday. Can't you become hardworking tomorrow? Have you not wondered the kind of prayer of supernatural you are looking for? Why has it not turned around? Because if you say supernatural, it starts from natural. So we first check your natural before your super. What will you be super in? If you are lazy, you'll be super in living. No matter the anointed, you have seen anointed, I've seen anointed lazy pastors before. There's a pastor who is heavily anointed, he's a prophet, he's pastoring 20 people, and he's asking for money. I said, go and find a job. He said, no. No, sir. The kind of anointing. No, sir. The, no, sir. The kind of anointing on my head. No, go and find a job. Find a nine to five with 20 people you are pastoring. It just tells you that the anointing is not, it's not, it's not, it's not, uh, give me English. It's not, uh, it's not converting. No, sir. No, sir. And you know, as a spiritual person, they don't say, sir. Sir. S is sh. Jesus. Jesus said, go and look for a job. Find something to do. I've been putting problems. And I gave him money first time. I said, I can't give you money again. I know that you are, see, see if, you are, if you are stupid, if you become supernatural, you'll be super stupid. It's an anointing. An anointing comes to, it comes upon what you do in the natural. If you are, if you are lazy, you'll be super lazy. So they are lazy pastors. They are lazy reverends. They are lazy bishops. When they mention bishop in this country, the first name that comes to your head automatically is who? Is who? How come? Who told you? How did you know he's the one they're talking about? Do you know how many bishops they have? That man will tell you he works 18 hours. There are bishops that don't work. They just wear collar. Looking for people to be bowing to them. The Jesus that we serve he was a 9 to 5 guy. You can't tell me your 9 to 5 is the reason. Let me show you something about 9 to 5. Go to Luke chapter 1. Are we getting blessed this morning? Go to Luke chapter 1. Let me show you something. Look. This will bless you. This is not part of my message, but look at it. Glory be to God. I said glory be to God. Go to verse 21 very quickly. Where he was talking to Theophilus. No, 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 no. Look for what he's talking to Theophilus. If that's two or something, very quickly. Help me find it. Oh, thank you, Lord. It's not part of my message, but I, I, I want to teach us something there. Okay, verse three. Is it verse three? Okay, good. Now, now, this is, now Luke was a medical doctor. Are you aware? So this is Dr. Luke. This is Dr. Luke. So, he wasn't just... So, we have example of a carpenter, Jesus. 
who was a nobody. Now, this one went to school. So it means that in the days of Jesus, he had the opportunity to go to school. There was no money. Are we together? There was no money. So even when there's no money and you couldn't go do a lot of things for yourself, I'm saying that it is still possible. It's the same principle. Look at this. He's a medical doctor who came to serve under Jesus. The first question, without even reading the scripture, I won't go for that. How did he have time to write the books of the Bible as a nine to five guy? Think about it. He's nine to five, right? How did he get the time to spend in God's presence? It's not that he wrote a book. He wrote a book of the Bible called Luke. And we read it today. Nine to fiver. Come on. You can't tell me that's the reason why you can't be discipled. You can't tell me that's the reason why you can't do more. One day I spoke to somebody, I told him my schedule, what my schedule looks like in a day. When it was done, and because I have a to-do list on daily basis, and I showed him, it's not that I was writing his prayer, I showed him. When it was done, he said, am I a human being? I said, yes. I write academic papers at least three in two weeks. A regular professor will write one in six months. probably have 13 speaking engagements in one week. 13. I've had consistent block notes. I mean, the workers will understand why I have block notes. When we talk about systems, um, with these systems thinking together because of lack of rest and all that we did on Wednesday. I've had it for like four or five days. And it's not because I'm sick. It's because I've not been able to sleep. We're still here till late night. I, I still have some of you here, which is amazing. Till late night yesterday. Went home, showered, woke up, slept a bit, woke up, back again. From here, I'm on a trip for five days. So, you can't be lazy. And you're, please, stop praying if you are lazy. Stop praying. There are some people that are saying that um, you're, we want God to, to, to deal with your enemies. That song that said, deal with, and you are the enemy of yourself. You want God to kill you. was a nine to five guy. Dr. Luke now wrote a book of the Bible. What is your excuse? I know, I know. You don't know. If you know the kind of work, we go to Ireland in the morning, we come back in the night. It's called carpenterization. People have done it. Some of us worked before we came into ministry now and we are still working. Glory to God. Now let's get back to Jesus. I just wanted to talk about Luke. And Luke was just mentoring Theophilus and was telling Theophilus how his life is going to go if he goes with this same attitude of becoming a cosmopolitan Christian. And I was trying to explain, Theophilus, this is what you need. That you can show the world that you can be a carpenter. Then that's where you can now tell them that you are sent to be their savior. And that's why somebody who is not well read, you know, when you say I'm in depth, I mean, I have a depth. I mean, somebody spoke to me recently and said that I'm indebted 500 million naira. You know, if you have never walked before, all you will have is prophetic insight to say in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray for you in the next few days, you know, that God will help you out of it. In Jesus' name, amen. For somebody who, who walked and who is well read, he knows what to say before praying. He knows the questions to ask. I don't want us to be lazy Christians. This discipleship. That's why I said, let's go back to the basics. Let's go back to the basics. Glory to God. My time is up, but I'll take some time. Can I continue? Thank you. He became a carpenter. There's something I want to show you. Which one should I show you first? There's a scripture that explained that the upper room that the Holy Ghost came to, it was well furnished. Give me that scripture in Acts chapter 1. 
is in Acts chapter 1. That the upper room where the Holy Ghost was going to meet with them, it was a well furnished upper room. Please help me check it. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. Or it can also be in the last books of the gospel too. You can find 28 of local or, or 1. Thank you, Jesus. Give honor to your life by, by walking out spiritual things alongside with your secular. Because in God's eyes, these things are not supposed to be different. They're not supposed to be different. Have you found it for me? Help me look for it very quickly. Or check the last book of the gospel before you get to act. Okay, so Luke, Luke has it. Dr. Luke has it. Start from verse 11. Now look at this scripture. Okay, this is not even the scripture. This is not the scripture. So he said, and said to the owner of the house, the teacher asked, where is the guest room that I may eat? No, so I'm talking about when the Holy Ghost came down. This can explain it, but for the purpose of context and clarity and accuracy. Where the Holy Ghost was at the upper room, that just type upper room that was furnished. You will see. Any luck? What I wanted to bring out from that scripture is that, you see that place the Holy Ghost came and the Bible says that it was furnished. It was furnished there was just a carpentry language. It just meant that somebody furnished it. If you check well, the Bible never talked about other carpenters in the days of Jesus. There would actually be others. If you check well, it was Jesus that furnished it. If you check well, it was Jesus that furnished it. This time, he was just ending his teenage age. Let's see the last slide and let's go. Go to Acts chapter 1. Hmm. Verse 20. Act 1 verse 20. Jesus who was a carpenter. See the things he said with his mouth. The kingdom of God is like unto a man. The kingdom of God is like unto a man. It means that when there was no carpet, when there was no customer, when he was not making stool, when he was not making um, the dining table, there was no work to do. Jesus would sit down somewhere in his shop and will be reading the Bible and he will be praying he could create time in the midst of no time he could create time in the midst of no time I'm saying that it's possible for you to walk 9 to 5 and pastor a church successfully like a seed if that's a great they were all in agricultural time and that's why he would talk like that if it is now the tech days he'll be speaking tech language please if god wherever you find yourself represent jesus what did i say represent you are a savior represent jesus then let them shake you in intelligence let them see that intelligence day in jesus let them shake you in wisdom tell them there's wisdom let me check your capacity. Write proposal. Simple proposal. I hope you know that when Joseph was able to help um, is it Egypt for seven years, he wrote a proposal to the king. Life. Business development. The same Joseph, when he was inside the prison, he was watching that nobody taught him. He would go and look at other people in the prison. How are you doing? Hope you are fine. Hope you are great. Human resource management. The day they were going to pick the captain inside prison, they had to look for somebody who has done extra than others. If you see the Bible, you see HRO. 
You see facility management. Oh. You will see this. You will see everything. You see it. And they were not sure about it. They did it well. Can we present a Jesus that is intelligent to the world? Can we present a Jesus that is smart to the world? Can we stop presenting a mediocre Jesus? Thank you for clapping. Present a good Jesus. And to present a good Jesus, you work. You will work. See Acts 1 verse 20. Thank you, Lord. Now, Peter was also a fisherman. Peter was a fisherman. Hmm. Now, Jesus had died and he had resurrected. And now, he began to teach his disciples for 40 days. For 40 days. He was teaching them for 40 days. Hmm. He was teaching his disciples for this, and he was teaching them the same thing every day. The message of the kingdom. The same thing for 40 days. Because he just wanted them to get it. He wanted them to get it. He wanted them to get it. He wanted them to get it. At that time, he was 33 and a half. He was 33 and a half. Now, look at this ratio now. Look at this ratio. To preach a sermon, he did 40 days to get a sermon to sink into people. 40 days. So it tells you that even to preach a message, if you just don't want to be a professional teacher, to really teach people the word of God, there's a level of preparation that must go into it. Well prepared. When he was 12 years old, he was seeking teachers for three days. When he was 33 and a half, he was studying for 40 days and teaching for 40 days in the same temple. You can see the progression. He never stopped learning. He never stopped learning till he died. Say to yourself, say, I won't stop learning. Say to yourself, say, I won't stop learning. Eighteen years after becoming a carpenter, who told Jesus? So let me give you, you know, it was when he was a carpenter, that was when the devil came to meet him and said, if you are the son of God, turn this stone to bread. I hope you know. And Jesus quoted Deuteronomy and said, man shall not live by bread alone. If he never read his Bible as a carpenter, how will he know how to answer the devil? Do you think that man shall not live by bread alone? You think it was God that told him? No. And he was answering the devil. He said, if you can turn stone to bread, I would, you. he said, man shall not live by bread alone. He said, what if I take the top of the top of the And he was giving him. He was quoting Deuteronomy. In the day of trouble and storm and pressure, with all the church that you have been to in 35 years, do you know what to say? Do you have a scripture? One. See, it would be a shame to just be a church goer. And these things don't come into us. Do you have what to say? He, it was in the book of Deuteronomy. He said that man shall not live by... It was not God that told Jesus. It was just, just reading. Man shall not live by bread alone. You quote it today. Many don't even know where it is. I thought it's Jesus that said it. The man that said that uh, he said, you will live. This thing you say when you pray. We move. We have a total... I hope you know that it was... Somebody who was not born again that made that statement. It was not Jesus. It was not the disciples that made that statement. It was somebody who was just outside of that, of that world that said it. He was just a philosopher. Did. They always say that if you want to hide something from Africans, hide it in a book. They say it. And till date, they are still saying it. Till date, people don't read. You would rather want to outsource your life to a crusade and go and listen to a man of God to tell you that it is finished or it is done. When you can read it. But the generation is rising from this place. I said the generation is rising from this place. In the name of Jesus Christ. I act for Act 1. Act 120. Now see what Peter said. Jesus knew how to answer. Now Peter was a fisherman. 
So he had a skill too. So you can see that Jesus did not call anybody that didn't have a skill. You see that? All this, uh, we are going to heaven. I don't need to do anything. You are living a useless life. I, I tell you, no two kings can stay in heaven. When we go to heaven, we say hi for a few years. The earth will be destroyed. A new, generation, a new Jerusalem shall be built. You will come back and continue your laziness. You still be looking for a job after the new generation, after new Jerusalem. See what Peter said. And this is where I'm going to end. Peter said something powerful. He said, it is written in the book of Psalms. Peter was answering the Sanhedrin court. And he said, it is written in the book of Psalms. May his place be deserted. Let there be one to dwell in it. May another take the place of his leadership. Peter was telling them that this is what's going to happen to Judas. He said, I read it in the book of Psalms. Jesus said, I read it in the book of Deuteronomy. Read. So if you are working in an organization, you have not read a book around your department since you have started working. And you are praying for supernatural position. I'm not your pastor. You know where your pastor is. And you know people that will give you those kind of things. You are not reading. You are not preparing yourself. And you want supernatural. Ha. And these are the kind of things that atheists see us. And they ask us that, are these guys thinking at all? Have you ever sat down with an atheist before? That the things you bring out and you say, they are beginning to wonder that, are you, are this, are you intelligent in what you are saying? I honor the person who sang that song and, and the person knows what he is saying. I'm only questioning our interpretation. The person, sang what is, the person is trying to say that God can lift a man you know, from the dunghill. So the writer of the song knows what he or she is saying. But our interpretation and our approach to it is very bad. You can't find it in one in the Psalms. You will actually have to look at three Psalms merged together. That statement he made. Because there's nowhere in the Bible you find that thing quoted. You have to go to Psalm 69, then go to Psalm 108 and 112. You will now see those statements one by one arranged. So it means that when Peter was speaking, he was talking to these scriptures at the same time. Those are posing it together. But, I mean, two Until I then decided that I should have was putting three things together. It is written. Do you know what is written about your place? Do you know what is written about what you are doing? Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The saviors are rising. And if God says saviors are rising, this is part of the training that Savior was pushing for. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So you can be bivocational and you can be great. You can be bivocational and be a blessing to your world. I hope that after today's message, you can write out decisions for yourself. You write it down where you are jotting my decision from this message. These are the things. I, I just don't want you to be pumped up. That after today's how was that message? Ah, that message humble me all. I was deep. Ah, deep. What can you learn there? Forget it. It's deep. It's deep. Please, explain your deep. Write your decisions. This is what I would do. Can you write it, everybody? Write your decisions from today's message. If you have to take a course, write it. I will take a course in this. If you have to go back to school, I need to go back to school. Oh, I need to, you know, write it. Write it. It will help you. As your pastor, there's no quarter that passes that I don't do a professional certification. At least I do two. I'm not looking for a job. I'm not looking for a job. I just finished another one. Got my certificate day before yesterday. I'll start another one again. I'm not looking for a job. 
study yourself to show yourself approved. Study to show yourself approved. A, what, a, a, a man who is rightly dividing. So, everybody can study. Not everybody is approved. Everybody can preach. Not, it doesn't mean that it is approved. So, make a decision. This is the next thing I want to do. Now, in, after you have asked yourself the question, so how can I achieve this? That questioning now helps you to be able to go further. Please don't be a lazy Christian. God is counting on you. Nigeria is waiting for you. Africa is waiting for you. The whole world is looking at Africa right now. And God's people must rise. The ideas in you must rise. The things that God has put inside of you can rise. No matter where you are. Jesus was just a mere carpenter. And see how God raised him. Look at Peter who was just a fisherman. See how God raised him. Then look at the example of somebody who was well studied called Dr. Luke. See how God used him with his bivocational assignment. Let's stand to our feet this morning. Thank you, Jesus. I want us to worship God over what we have heard this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Just thank the Lord for what you have received this morning. And I want you to participate in that worship. Just thank him. And begin to pay allegiance. And begin to talk about the decisions that God will have you make. Lord, I decide. For some of you, it's a vow to be better. To be great. To keep moving. I would sacrifice. Some of you don't know that the masters you will do is because of the gospel friends who want to do PhD in theology. Not what would they do? Which job? Who would get PhD in theology for what? Because they want to be able to defend the gospel. So they needed the right knowledge. There's an agenda with all these all this steps and you must be able. Pray that God will help you. Pray that God will help you. Some of you are at the point you are asking God with all that you have given me. What, what is the reason? What would you have me do? Why are you promoting me? Why are you helping me? Why are you lifting me? Reveal your plan to me. What would you have me do, Lord? What's your agenda for my life? Pray. Speak to the Lord this morning. Speak to the Lord this morning. Pray, 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 pray. Jesus at 12 was a student seeking knowledge. At 34 or 33 and a half rather, he was a teacher. 12 seeking knowledge. 34, a teacher. 12 seeking, seeking knowledge. 34, a teacher. What is 34 minus 12? 20 what? 22. So it means that if you can, for a few years, like 20, put yourself into this thing, it will show it means that at 34 your destiny should have opened up to you by the curriculum of the scripture by 34 you can see that we are all late including myself we are all late if you are less than 34 you have time to catch up but it shows your destiny should have opened up at 34 when at 34 you are still asking your mom why is there no food for me this afternoon at 34, why, why are you treating me like this inside this house? No. 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 I want you to pray for grace to close the gaps. Do you understand that prayer? Grace to close the gaps according to what is written in the scripture. I want you to pray that. Go ahead and pray it. Grace to close the gaps. We will rise in your name I don't Lord I receive grace Lord I receive grace Lord 
I receive grace. We There's a way you will know things. Let me talk to you a little bit about discernment. There's a way you will know things. This is what I'm saying to you. Jesus said, man shall not live by bread. Because he read. He knew things. Peter was quoting a scripture. Juxtaposing three things together. There was a time Jesus, Peter was quoting Apple, um, Joel, Joel in the Bible. That it has been said. That in the last days, the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon. He was quoting Joel. Knowing things. Listen, there's a way you can be reading the Bible. And you're reading the Bible. And you are reading, and the wall of partition, broken into two, shall become one. And as you are reading it, you are seeing God tell you, you will come out of school with two one. See, you can see the name of your husband in the Bible, and yet it's not written inside the Bible. But you, when you read it, you saw the name of you knew that this was the person. Another person will read it. He can't see the name of the person you saw. You can know things by consistent practice. You can know. It is possible to know things that you will just be reading the Bible. You will be reading and God, ah, no, no. I'm putting my money in this place. You saw it, but it's not written there. But you saw it. There's a way you can talk. So these guys will be talking. They'll say, Joel said. They just know things. Oh, Sam said. Jesus said, Deuteronomy. Jesus was quoting Moses. He used the book that Moses wrote to cast the devil away. You just know things. So all the knowledge you are gathering, the things you are doing, is to help you to come into a knowing. That in the days of decision, you can know what to do. You will see it. You will see it. You will see it. Somebody one day said, you know, you were preaching this particular verse and um, that was the day I knew that this is what God wanted me to do. And this guy, this lady rather, went to build an organization, fantastic organization now. And I said, did she share the testimony with me? I thought, you know, people, some people use the scope to get access to you. To say, you bless me, so, 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 and so. And so, it's, they just want you to, use, but many people are at the level that they don't need to be lying to get access. I told the girl, can you share with me the scripture? If you say, I showed you a scripture, and you need to build this organization, can you share that scripture with me? Because it, it, it helps you to know that it was by the Spirit of God. Because even me too, I didn't see the scripture. And the girl sent me the scripture. I've read the scripture many times in my life. I've not seen what she has seen. I, I wish I can see it. I didn't see it. And you just come into a knowing. I want us to pray for the spirit of cancer that God brings you to the point where you will know things for to make decisions, life decisions do things for yourself you know, decision on career, decision on business ability to know things oh, it is time for this COO to go you understand, you just know it not because or anything, you just came to that knowing and you pray to God the grace to know, to know things to know things as you study the scripture come and pray Pray for it. About me to do your, your will, oh God. God. Pray. We will know things. We will know I've things. We will know things. We will know things. We will know things. We will know things. We will answer questions. We will present papers. We will write proposals. We will know things. We will get access. We will just know. We will just know. We will know. We will know. To know things. Your will, God. I have come in the volume. I have come in the volume of the books. It was written about me. 
so it means that you owe this generation a lot with your bivocational life because you are first a Christian before you are a worker. Do you believe that? Except you are first a worker, maybe you are first a banker before you became a Christian. And I don't think that is right. You are first a Christian before you became a banker. You are first a Christian before you became an engineer. You cannot live that part of your life and face engineering all your life. You would have missed some things in your build-up process, in your growing up process in life. You would have missed a lot of things. It means that as you are doing the engineering, who says you can't write a book about the Holy Spirit? Because these are your dealings with God when you are working during your carpenterization process. There was something a customer said you should do, you couldn't do it. You received an inspiration from the Holy Spirit, then you did that thing. Who says you can? Who says it's only pastors and that, that can write those things? Who says you can't write a book on holiness? You can't write a book on righteousness? No. And we need to begin to bring that intelligence back to say from my stead the little thing that I'm doing this is what I brought out you are disciples you are first a Christian in fact you are a full time Christian you are a part time engineer part time tech, part time fashion full time Christian full time you are in a bivocational relationship with God a lot can still come out a lot can still come out a lot can still come out. A lot. So don't limit yourself. Hey, me, I'm just a banker. I'm just an engineer. I'm just a this. No. No. Or somewhere on Saturday, on Saturday morning, they said to me, sir, do you know why we invited you for this thing? I said, no. They said, let's tell you the truth. He said that we just saw that we have not seen a Christian. And I said to them, you have not checked well. Because when people begin to talk to you, you think you are the only person, you know, maybe you have not checked. I said there are many people that God has. He said, we have not seen a Christian who can balance up research, learning, and practice together. And that's why we brought you to come and do this thing. And they locked me, they, they wanted to lock me up for four hours to be talking about research and planning. These things that I said, I knew when studying the scripture that I need to go and study for the life that God wants me to bring into the kingdom. There's a representation. You see, I'm representing a pattern in the body. You understand? That's why you find out that I, there are lots of things I do. For those who follow me online, it's a pattern that I believe God is bringing to the body to say that, come, you can be bivocational. You can love God, do a great job. It's possible. You can be a dancer and be writing books for the kingdom. You can be a model and still be writing books. So don't limit yourself. You are a full-time Christian, part-time worker. That's who you are. The moment you know this, it will recalibrate your mindset. Because some of you are already in love with your job. Just use Jesus for checkup on Sunday. That's if you can. Just use him for checkup. No, you can't use Jesus for checkup. He's your life. He's your life. He's your reality. He's your bread. Live for him. Live for him. Let them look at the church of Jesus one day. Let them see intelligence. Can you imagine a nation can write a church one day and say, can you come and teach us? You know it can, it's possible. That South Africa can write a church in Nigeria and say, come and teach us governance. Why? Because they have seen them. See, when the Bible says in the last days, the mountain of the Lord shall be exalted above all mountains and they shall say, come and teach us. It is not because they are spiritual. It is because of the intelligence that is coming out of the church. This morning I pray the servant spirit of God upon this house. Lift up your hands as I pray for you. I pray for the spirit of wisdom. This is very special. Take this very special. I pray for the spirit of wisdom. I pray for the spirit of knowledge. I pray for the spirit of understanding. 
I pray for the spirit of counsel. I pray for the spirit of might. I pray for the spirit of the Lord. I pray for the spirit of the fear of the Lord. I pray for the spirit of excellence. As he was upon Daniel, as he was upon Nehemiah, as he was upon Deborah, as he was upon Esther, I pray for that spirit of excellence in the name of Jesus. By prophetic signal, listen, Eden is a governing church. It's a governing church. We represent a pattern. We represent a pattern. In the name of Jesus, I pray our lives will begin to show it. Anybody dealing with laziness, the spirit of being small, the spirit of just being lethargic, I pray, it, see, it, sometimes it, this thing does not require prayer, but I just sincerely pray from my heart that from today henceforth, you'll be three times ahead You'll be three steps ahead. You will know what to do. You will know what to do. You will not be stuck again. You will not be stuck again. Every leverage you need for the next level. May God of heaven bring alignment for such leverage in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. We give you all the glory. In Jesus' most precious name, we have prayed. Have I challenged you this morning? Put your hands together for the Lord and give Him praise.